Good morning. Thank you, everyone, and thanks for the invite. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, you'll see that on the agenda I was talking about upskilling of local teachers. I'm not quite sure where that came from, but um, probably came from me a long time ago. But I'm going to talk about ASEAN and maybe some challenges and opportunities uh, that we, we have and we face. I think it echoes what uh, Vicky was saying earlier on about we're now, I think, in a position where we're a platform to actually go out into ASEAN, um, and I'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. Just want to give you a bit of background about the University of Nottingham, <clears throat> obviously a UK university. Um, we've been operating in Malaysia for 17 years. We started operating in 2000, um, and as it's 2017, it makes the maths quite easy. Um, we now feel embedded in Malaysia. We're Myra Five Star, which means we're um, one of the top research universities in the country. Uh, we're also Satara Five, which means we're one of the top teaching and learning um, universities in the country. And people with a UK background or still operating in the UK, you'll see similarities with REF and TEF. Um, we get fixated about Myra and Satara here. We've got 5,000 students, 700 staff, so we're a fairly, um, well, I lead the organisation, so I feel it's a fairly big organisation. 700 people and 5,000 students to look after. And we operate out of a purpose-built campus in Seminia, about 35 kilometres from here. As I say, we now feel as if we're embedded in the country. Uh, there's, there's lots of challenges locally. I'm not going to talk about them, but uh, myself and Perry could talk to you for days if you wanted to know about those challenges. Um, but we are taking the lead on some what we think quite important initiatives in country. So my mentor, which is about trying to generate a postdoctoral culture in Malaysia, we don't have that at the moment. Um, once you've got a PhD, you go and get a job and then you do lots of teaching and admin and that doesn't happen in the UK and Australia and America. You tend to do a period of postdoctoral study. And we're also working on, uh, we've just started actually a big project with Bangladesh, um, which is, is upskilling teachers, local teachers in Bangladesh. Over five stroke six years, that will upskill about 8,000 teachers um, and college lecturers in Bangladesh. Um, a thousand of them will come to Malaysia and they will be following a trainer the trainer model, and then the other 7,000 will be uh, trained in Bangladesh. And we've just had the first cohort of 100 people, 100, the first cohort um, in Malaysia over the last three weeks. They've now gone back. They continue studying for their MA in education. They'll come back for another three weeks, then I'll do a project, and then they'll get an MA, and they'll become our trainers in Bangladesh. So that's a massive project for us, and that's got the support of the Ministry of Higher Education, which we're, we're very grateful for. What I want to really, really talk about was um, what we're doing now in the ASEAN region and what we would like to do. And it was actually at Bet Asia last year and actually at the Bet Asia conference and also in this room, I think probably the same event that, um, that you were at, uh, Sumitra, um, where I was approached by four different countries. I was approached by Hugh Evans, who's the um, Vicky's equivalent in Laos. I was approached by uh, Myanmar, Cambodia, and also Nigel Bowd, who used to be, who used to work here, is now the deputy commissioner or deputy ambassador. I'm still get a bit lost between consulates, ambassadors and commissioners. Um, but anyway, Nigel used to work here, he's now the deputy ambassador or commissioner in, Bank in the Philippines. And they all asked the same question. They all said, can the University of Nottingham open a campus in Laos, Myanmar, Cambodia or Philippines? And that was all independently. And I, my response to that is always, no, we can't. We've got campuses in the UK, China and uh, Malaysia. And we're not stamp collecting and, you know, we're not going to go and op open Camp Syria because it's, it's a big commitment on our side. But we would like to have a presence in those countries. So the conversation says, no, we're not going to open a campus. That's way above my pay grade and the Vice-Chancellor has stated that we're not going to open campuses in, in any other countries. Although a new Vice-Chancellor starts in the 1st of October, so uh, she may have a totally different view. And if I'm fortunate enough to be at Bet Asia in November, I might be saying something totally different. But what that led to was actually a visit, and I'll, I'll reflect, we, we visited the Philippines, I didn't go, some colleagues of mine went, we were hosted by, the, um, by Nigel there and we met with various partners, and there's another follow-up visit to the Philippines to try and do some, some teaching or some operations there. 
which will follow the Laos model, and I talk about the Laos model because uh, I know more about that. Following that Asia and the roundtable discussions here last year with um, Hugh Evans, we visited Laos um, earlier this year, and it was really to be introduced to a, uh, an education group there who recognised that once people have got to a certain point in the private education sector in Laos, they have nowhere to go. They can go to the public university there, um, but it's recognised that it, you know, there's probably better options, but it's quite expensive to go to the UK or even Malaysia. So that's why they wanted us to open a campus in, in Laos. And we said we can't do that, but we might be able to operate out of Laos. We might be able to do flying model. We might be able to have a presence there, but not open a campus. That's more of a, you provide the facilities, you put bums on seats, and we'll come and deliver our programs. That's the model that we're, we're talking about. That, mi that meeting, that visit we had to Laos was followed up by Hugh Evans, uh, who's the ambassador, UK ambassador, visiting the UK of Nottingham, uh, sorry, the UK campus of Nottingham uh, in the summer um, when he was back over in the UK and I was fortunate enough to be there so we hosted that. He met with our Vice Chancellor and various other key stakeholders, was still very invigorated and very um, upbeat about the visit. And yesterday, one of these fortuitous things, the Minister of Sport and Education uh, for Laos was in Malaysia, um, and it's luckily that they're sport and education because they're here for the SEA Games. Um, and they took the opportunity, or she took the opportunity, to visit the University of Nottingham Malaysia campus in Semenyi, along with the um, partner that we're hoping to work for in Laos. They came over from Laos. So there was a delegation to uh, our campus yesterday. Uh, I wasn't there, unfortunately. I was working on a, my mentor project. I was at UPSI in Perak. Uh, but that visit went fantastic, apparently. The minister is very happy. Um, the potential partner is very happy. Um, and now we're going to go back to Laos in a couple of weeks, beginning of September, really to talk about the model. And it's the model which is the, the tricky part, because it's got to be a win-win for everybody. It's got to be financially sustainable. We've got to be able to deliver our programmes. We've got to make sure the quality's there, etc. all the things that, that the HE sector does. So Laos is our sort of our hot prospect at the moment in ASEAN. The Philippines is as well, um, and we're looking at a similar um, offering in the Philippines. Cambodia and Myanmar, we've said we need to keep them on the back burner because we can't do all these things at the same time. But every so often they sort of come to the front burner as people contact us and say, can you, come on, can you please open a campus in Cambodia or Myanmar? We won't do that, but we will go and talk to them. So we're, there's possibly a trip, I think, to Myanmar in the next couple of months. So what's going on now? So there's lots to follow up on. Laos is our priority. We want to really focus on Laos because that's we've had the ambassador over. They visited us. The ministers visited us. We really want to progress that. Um, but I think in doing all of these things, um, as, as Vicky said earlier, we can't do it in isolation. We've had fantastic support from the High Commission um, and Bet Asia. We, we wouldn't have got to where we are with Laos without Bet Asia last year because I wouldn't have been approached by the Commissioner, by the Ambassador, and by this potential partner. Um, and we wouldn't, have, you know, we wouldn't have spoken to Nigel, probably. Um, you know, he wouldn't have been so, so forthright. So we've had fantastic support from the, from the High Commission, people like Al Alison, who was around just now, um, Alison Collingridge, Paul Rennie and Vicky and, uh, you know, a lot of the staff here have given a fantastic support. But great support from BMCC, from, um, uh, uh, so, sorry, from the uh, BMCC, from um, Aurelia, and also from the British Council, from Sarah Deverell and her team. So I think what we've found over the last 17 years, we come to Malaysia to operate in Malaysia, and the UK was obviously at a point then where they started reaching out. So when we came to Malaysia, we were the first foreign branch campus in Malaysia. In 2004, we opened a campus in China. Since then, another 4K universities have come into Malaysia, Reading, Heriot Watt, Southampton, and Newcastle. Always a bit worried about reeling them off because I always forget one. Um, and there's three, um, 
There's three Australian universities here, Monash, Swinburne and Curtin, and also a Chinese university now. So these, these universities have reached out into Malaysia, and we're now finding ourselves having a good, solid base in Malaysia, being here 17 years, and we're now starting to reach out into ASEAN much more effectively than they can do from the UK, because it's easy for me to go to Laos. It's not easy to send a delegation from the UK um, on the times, you know, just cost and time. So we've got a fantastic opportunity here, and it's got to be done as a team. We, can't, we can do it ourselves, but it's hard work. But having the British Council, the High Comm, uh, BMCC, and all of those people supporting and Bet Asia here and helping and facilitating the network is absolutely fantastic. And that's really helped us with our aspirations in ASEAN. And in fact, we probably wouldn't have had an aspiration in ASEAN if it wasn't for Bet Asia. Because I go to the UK and say, my big strategic vision is to reach out into ASEAN. And they think I've done this big sort of planning strategy. But it was really four countries coming up to me in Bet Asia saying, please open a campus in Malaysia, in these four countries. I said, no, but we'll come and talk to you. Two of those are really hot at the moment, Philippines and Laos. Cambodia and Myanmar are... They, they go hot and cold, depending, because we're trying to push them back a little bit at the moment. We're, we're struggling sometimes. Uh, so happy to talk about that at any time. I'm being given the, uh, I'm being given the sign. Happy to talk to anyone about that any time, either in the Q&A session or email me or come and visit our campus. You've got an open invite to come and visit our campus. Thank you very much.